the first two games we played really well, I think, and we basically stomped them. Everyone is really confident right now. They're obviously a good team. We shouldn't underestimate them, but we know how to beat them. We shouldn't be scared of them. Even though uh, they look good, I think we look much better, and we will show that. We will just out team fight them. I'm really happy we can play against G2. We have less pressure, G2 have high pressure, so it's good for us. We can win, I think, easily, yeah. <laughs> I'm happy that Fnatic won versus Vitality. The teams are not so different, like Vitality and Gamers too. I'm looking forward to playing in Notre Dame no matter what. It, it will be my first experience to play on like such a big stage, and now it actually makes it even more interesting for me to play semi-finals, because I'm against my friends. It's, it can only be fun, you know? Yeah, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We have to win this playoff. Sweet Championship Series in Rotterdam. As you can see, G2 there chilling by the pool, getting ready for their best off series versus these guys. Fnatic looking to put their name on the wall once again. And all the crowd super hyped as well. And so are we. Today we'll tell if Fnatic will see their seventh final or if G2 can challenge their reign in the region. Good evening, everyone. I'm Evia Shok Zaportre, joined on the analyst desk by Mitch Krepel Voorspoels, as well as Origin Jungler Amazing and the support for H2K Vander. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I know obviously you just played each other yesterday, but maybe Vander, you first after a night of sleep. How are you looking back on the series? Yeah, the night was rough. <laughs> I mean, uh, I think we didn't live up to what people thought, how we're going to play. It was all, a, a lot came down to, I think, the heat of the moment that uh, the game one, game two went really bad for us when we were forcing stuff. And after this, the rest of the games, we played a bit slower and a bit uh, scared, maybe. Yeah, let's talk a bit more about uh, that game to start everything off with. Amazing. If you look at the series as a whole, what do you think was the most important thing that you guys did better than H2K? Um, we just knew how to force fights and better, and we knew our power spikes a lot better. I think that we um, really understood the lane swap meta per se better, so we kind of had a um, head scaling comps and knew when to team fight with them and basically outscaled them in most of the cases where they were in the timer. So I think we just understood the patch slightly better than they did and it helped us win. For me, actually, a lot of it came down to kind of like mental stability and then of course you get Soas on the screen which is like maybe the opposite of that sometimes but like stability throughout the entire series I feel like OG was a lot more composed and I have to be honest Vander I think uh, HGK in the last game you guys looked a little rough like off center there was that one fight where all the focus went towards Mithy's Braum uh, a couple engages that weren't really in sync was that something you guys felt as well or is that just an impression that I had? Yes uh, uh, part of the problem was that what uh, Amazing said that we had both games assassins, LeBlanc, and they had Orianna and Lulu, which is like scaling much better to late game and provides much more utility mm -hmm. for RDK in, in fights. And both games, we our top lane for really behind in one game as uh, Trandil, which really stopped us from forcing anything that played really good in their favor. And then we knew we had to do something, and unfortunately, the engages we we did were were wrong. Yep. Let's talk about a bit more picks that we saw yesterday. Braum, Echo, Lucian were all 100% pick ban, and especially, you mentioned it already, uh, Mithy on that Braum made so many things happen for the team. Yeah, I mean, if, if Mithy can keep certain players on his team alive, uh, <laughs> it's a really good job. No, I think Mithy, for me, really stood out because he understood his position in team fights and his role as a support. I think his support has um, lost a bit of playmaking ability in the current meta and just has to hover around carries and protect them as best as they can. That's why Alistair Braum were so favored. And the Braum just went up in priority over the series. I think at the start of the series, both teams maybe didn't have that high of an emphasis, but I think we quickly learned just how important that pick is. Yes, uh, we thought that Alista would be much more contested pick than Braum itself. And then like maybe Bard into Braum if uh, something wrong happens. But uh, last year when we played OG in semifinals in the Rocket, I played against Mifi and it was the same story that first two games no one replaced Braum and then we're like, holy shit, Braum is OP actually. Yeah. And 
promise every game. It's one of those picks also that just works a little bit better, I feel, on a LAN environment rather than just in scrims, because it just, it's super straightforward. Um, you can really make somebody's day uh, horrible by just blocking all the projectiles, and it's just, yeah, just a super strong pick. I think a lot of people underestimate how Braum is good into scaling game, because when he has both his Q and E leveled up, the cooldown of his shield is really low, and then with some CDR, you are basically four seconds shield with eight seconds cooldown. So in team fights, you can block basically everything. Well, well, yeah. Okay. yeah, it's a, it's a lot about the scaling part where Braum just excels at late game team fighting too, and he always provides like jungle support synergy too because every jungle synergy is with it, and uh, making other champions uses is basically a big part of his kit too. So uh, if you have a LeBlanc, a Gragas, something like that coming in, into him, um, they're not going to have the same effect as they would in a standard game, uh, which is why Braum is such a game changing champion. Yeah, and yes. Missy also going about And the uh, good Braum can also make a lane phase in a way that you are like even or maybe winning a bit. So it's not a, it's not a weak champion early game and it's super powerful late. Well, especially in today's series, it will probably be very important as well. But with their win, Origin advances to next week's finals, while H2K will look towards the third place and the championship points that come with it, which is a story that we know from last year. Yeah, obviously, uh, Vander wasn't there before H2K the, for the organization. They, they got to the world finals by, by merit of those championship points. I imagine by now teams aren't really thinking about it too much. Because, uh, you know, everybody wants to win, but by summer these become very important. So right now, yeah, 30 points guaranteed for you so far. Finally, you guys can make hey. it to 50. Uh, <laughs> and last year, it was it literally was a difference of perhaps 10 points. Um, so it's super important that everybody just keeps fighting and, and gets as many points as possible. Yes, we'll fight hard for the third place and 20 more points. 20 more points? Good. That's what I want to hear. Fight for those points. And 70 already for OG, so... Thing to look forward to. Yeah, quite a change. Uh, last year was a bit of an <laughs> interesting uh, a thing where we actually had to run run the gauntlet and everything like that. It's really stressful, so you kind of want to have the champion po uh, chip points coming in, so you don't have uh, uh, or you have something to fall back onto. Yeah, you did say in a video yesterday it's all about the end of the year, so you already have those championship points. Yeah, basically. It's all kind of about the spring championship as well, amazing, <laughs> let me tell you that. And in any case, that leaves just one seat open in next week's title fight, which will go to the winner of today's series between the first seed G2 Esports and the sixth seed Fnatic. As we can see there, G2 is a blue side only in game one of the possible five games. What do you guys make of that amazing? I think that the red side favors G2 a lot in terms of how I expect them to play because having a counter pick on the mid lane matchup is pre pre uh, pretty crucial for both of those teams because uh, the mid laners are focal points of their respective teams. So I expect G2 to uh, have really good red side games and uh, I think that the side selection basically favors them. All right, well, immediately following today's series here in Berlin, it is North America's turn as the Immortals and TSM go at it for a ticket to the Spring Championship in Las Vegas. Of course, we already know how everything is going to go. The epic storyline, TSM is going to beat Immortals, Crepo. Yeah, I just, uh. I don't know. I was going to predict Immortals, but lately I'm, I'm <laughs> not having too much faith in my uh, predictions overall. I, I just want to see how far the, the Janna Soraka train and Karma train for Adrian uh, goes. Like, how, how long can he keep doing that without people punishing him for it? Uh, I'm definitely going to watch the series after today. We're super excited and with a lot of professional experience on the desk today, we want to extend our expertise to you. Send your questions for our guests at LOL Esports with the hashtag AskTheDesk and we'll get you some answers later today. For now though, let's dial in on that second semi-final here in Europe. G2 Esports versus Fnatic. First up, Fnatic still unexpected team to see in the semi-finals going up and beating Vitality. Guys, talk to me about the Fnatic perceived playoff buff. Uh, Vander, what did they improve on? I think they got a really good strategy for themselves, which is 1-3-1, one, one, uh, putting Febiven on sideline with Gamsu, tipping in mid lane, and then when uh, your support and AD carry are on mid lane, 2v2, it's really hard for any of the of the team to, to capitalize on it. And it was main uh, fanatic weakness that they could, uh, uh, enemy team could catch their bot lane a lot of times. So when you put them mid, it's perfect for them. And then Fabian has a lot of room to, to play on sidelines and then TP or just have a strong pick on the sideline and create a lot of pressure the pressure game. Yeah, I think the same that um, for F Fnatic, it's really important that they can run the double TP and run it effectively. Uh, and the today's meta is basically favoring that anyway. Yeah. So I think that Fnatic throughout the play, uh, or like at least uh, after the regular season was over, now with playoffs, basically improved on the overall strategy that they had during the regular season already. and. Um, the meta favors them a lot. I, I definitely agree with the meta point. I think Fnatic, I mean, they did improve, but the meta shifting towards tank stops, 1-3 on double TP, uh, where Febbin can then have a larger impact, is definitely is definitely going to help them. But it plays into G2's hands as well, because they were already doing that. Kiki's never really was a, a carry top player. 
I want to highlight one comment that Fevim made in uh, one of the intro videos we had today. He said Vitality is very similar to G2. <laughs> I don't really think so. I don't think Cavushard is very comparable uh, to Kikis whatsoever. I think Fnatic is very similar to G2 in their style. But the main difference, I think, we'll find later in the mid matchup uh, because I think Perks versus uh, Fevim is different because Nuketox plays so far backward in the Vitality game. I don't think that's... Hugs the tower. Yeah, yeah he hugs the, uh, hugs the tower. <laughs> as much of a meme as it is, when he played Azir, I think he could have put way more pressure forward. And I think that's going to be the difference for today. We'll talk a bit more about that uh, well, hyped mid matchup in a second. First, let's look at G2 as a whole because they were very strong the, towards or during the entire split, rather. But what would you say they have improved on the most? Because for us, it often seemed in the beginning that they were over aggressive and they kind of made that better. Vander? I think their team fighting is ex exceptionally well, actually. I think, especially hybrid. For me, he's. Not that good overall, but when I see him in team fights, he always does the right thing. He always puts his spells correctly. So I think that's the biggest strength of this team, team fights. And then I feel like Trick is controlling the game really well in the jungle. So it isn't a coincidence that OG strong team fighting, G2 strong team fighting, Fnatic strong team fighting is now the three best teams for now in Europe. So I think it comes down to team fighting in the end. So if you win, uh, you, but you can get an advantage before that phase by playing the map correctly. And I think in so far, in our European playoffs, I'm a little bit disappointed in some of the games where people refuse to take opportunities to really get advantages on side lanes or, you know, always tunnel their t TPs into go mid instead of maybe just ganking side lanes with teleport. So we need to see if some of the teams actually get advantages playing on the map before we get into the teamfight phase. Yeah. Don't know yeah. if you guys, like, have and any opinions on that? Um, yeah, kind of. Uh, I don't think that the team fighting point is that big either. I think it's... Uh, it plays into it, but I I think that avoiding fights or t uh, like just taking taking picks or uh, looking for picks is something that most people don't do, and you have to be really creative about. It and I think it uh, takes a lot of skill to actually be able to do that. Uh, but I think that so far, yeah, no team has really done it besides us maybe yesterday once when we uh, trapped the Sivir once. But there's something that people have to look for. And I think that today is going to prove that the junglers have a really big effect in that department. Because like yesterday as well, we saw the map become incredibly tiny for a large par portion of the game. Whereas if we look over to like, I mean, this of course obviously the best team in the world, but the Rocks Tigers, they're really good at opening that map every time using those side lanes and then uh, finding openings, I think that's something that's lacking. Maybe we'll see it this series. Maybe we will. We need to talk about a couple of individual matchups that'll be very important. And the first one that comes to mind is that mid lane matchup, uh, Perks versus Febivan. And Perks told us that it's one that he's been really looking forward to. I'm happy that Fnatic won versus Vitality. And now it actually makes it even more interesting for me to play semifinals because I'm against my friends and it's, it can only be fun, you know? Last year he came into LCS as uh, same as me as challenger player and he was like the best EU mid laner for a whole year. So he showed up and proved a lot of people. So this year I was actually looking to do exactly the same. So I'm, I kind of took him as a, a I kind of looked up to him from his last season play and I learned a lot from him. So I'm actually really excited to face him in the playoffs. Yeah, what a storyline here. We see them there, Perks and Febivan. When they met each other this split, it went very much uh, for the side of Perks, even though it ended up being a one and one in the head-to-head. -head. But looking at yesterday's games, how much will the individual lane on its own influence the series? Amazing. I think that mid lane is really important because if you get an advantage in mid lane, you can translate it to side lanes. And uh, um, especially if you have a jungler that is able to control it on the mid lane together with the mid lane itself, uh, you can get so much advantage for, for your team. And th that's basically what Krabby talked about. That you want to get advantage before the uh, whole team fighting thing starts. And I think that's going to be really important this series. I think that's also one of the major strengths from Perks. There's so many like clips that are already spring to my mind where he pushes mid rotates bot for uh, for a play. Maybe at the start of the season was with the packs from Corky, makes it a little easier. But also Trick's style is very vision based. Like he would always just use the pressure that he gets from his lanes to then invade, mess with the other in jungle one v one, and when he leaves, he leaves some wards, and that allows the villagers to then play more aggressive again, you know, and then start translating these these advantages from mid to top, from top to mid, etc. And I think that's one of G2's strengths. Hopefully. Uh, they can keep doing that and hopefully Fnatic is not really prepared because then we can see some nice pickoffs. Yes, I agree that big strength of G2 is that uh, Trick is very good at realizing when he's stronger as a jungler and which point of the game. Then he just goes deep into enemy jungle and their mid lane and bot lane are really quickly to follow. And Kikis is always actually on point with his TP. I think he's probably the best uh, TP from top lane in, uh, right now. He's really fast and 
his tip is actually really good, I think. And that's something when people talk about Kikis, they're like, yeah, he's not that good, you know, maybe he gets out outclassed mechanically, but he's a player that works around his weaknesses. Like, if, if you're not the best player mechanically, perhaps he can't carry. I mean, just play your strengths, you know, play tanks and do good TPs, and I think he fits well because no, no team needs three hard carries. Mm -hmm. And I think he he's like a good puzzle piece there. Um, the only risk is if you then get up against really good top laners that just destroy you 1v1, that might be an uh, issue, but uh, in the tank meta, I don't really see that happening. Yeah, I think it's mainly differs on uh, what is played on top lane right now. If he would play on the world's patch, when it was like yeah. Fiora, Darius, then <laughs> I wouldn't say he would be a strong point in the team, but right now with the TPs and how you utilize your TP as a team, I think he's a good player. Echo could maybe shift that balance though, because that seems to be the one matchup. Uh, I see an amazing shaking no opinions. <laughs> no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. All right, it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. I mean, this is an analyst, an analyst that's good for <laughs> yeah, analysis, yeah, you know? Uh, in any case, the players or Gumsu is having a problem with his headset. We are resolving that so we have a bit more time to talk about it. And it's very interesting, the topic of the meta favoring one or the other team. And let's turn our attention towards the bottom lane. Hybrid, of course, we have uh, Vander here. You were lauded by a lot of people and guests that came to us as the best support in the EU LCS. I didn't show this. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, ah, maybe okay. not able to show yesterday. Uh, but what do you make of Hybrid and obviously Kleina that has had some practice on the team? Well, I think both me and Miti, it was like the better uh, support duo yesterday than uh, we'll see today. But Hybrid, what I said already, admi I'm admired how he team fights. I think he's really good uh, in team fights. So. That's his main strength. And then Clay, I think he's a bit better than uh, Hybrid in controlling vision. But then, uh, yeah, his team fight is not that good. You're frowning. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I disagree. I never watched, I see, you only can feel how good a player is at controlling vision when you play against him. It's hard to tell from for me from above. Um, I haven't paid that much attention to it. For me, Clay just feel, felt really weak up until the last few weeks where he improved a little bit. Um, yes, I mostly refer to what I saw in Vitality game and then yeah. What uh, I, s I, I played with Hybrid for the la last two weeks in scrims every day, so yeah. I, I could notice that his vision control is not that great. Maybe he's slacking a bit in uh, practice games. He's a uh, sandbag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what I like what I like about Hybrid and Emperor though is that they they can gracefully uh, lose a losing matchup in lane and and somewhat go even in CS. Is that something you've experienced? Uh, like in screens playing against yes. them, or, or do you guys butcher them? Yes, uh, I feel that sometimes when me and Forgiven have weaker matchup, we still try to win it, and sometimes it backfires hard yeah. when you play against good players. But they, when they, they when they are losing lane a bit and they feel that uh, maybe they're not on top of their game, they just fall back and they will safely farm until the point that they are strong and contribute in uh, in team fights. As as for the jungle, amazing. How annoying is it playing against Trick? Uh, pretty annoying. I think he really knows his power specs really well, and uh, it's something that. Um, is quite unique to him. I think that most junglers are really just just playing playing around the map and don't really go into any specifics or try to do anything creative. Whereas I think that Trick actually is really creative about what he does. Um, it's not just the TV wards that he puts behind bot lanes if they want to dive him, but it's also about like the way that he approaches like the one v one matchup. That he actually knows um, which spells he has to dodge, how he has to play it properly in order to get the most pressure and everything like that. So I. It's really annoying to play against him, but Spirit is also someone that is uh, pretty annoying to play against too, because this guy also knows a lot about uh, how to beat someone one one and is really confident in his mechanics. Yeah, they're they're very similar in style. I I feel overall. Do you think we'll see trackers or, or challenging smite from them? Because like if we if we have a patch where Kindred is like played, you you could technically go for red smite for these duels, or or do you think vision is too important for these junglers? Um, I think it really depends on game to game basis. Um, I think that overall uh, Trick is going to opt more into the tracker's knife because he's someone that is more vision oriented. Whereas uh, Spirit is someone that really wants to go extremely aggressive, not just in the 1v1 matchup, but also against the, uh, the, the enemy lanes. So he's probably going to be more likely to get Red Smite uh, than Trick is. I have short. to disagree here with yeah. Amazing. I think uh, whenever we see, depends on champion matchup, I feel. If Trick will be Graves, Kindred, uh, and there is like Ferja and Nidali, no, neither is uh, green, but yeah, the, those two, Grave Skinner, I think he'll mainly go for Red Smite. And then uh, another case, probably green, but I'm just support, so. Who's, who's the best sure. jungler? Who's the best jungler? What, in Europe? Yeah, Europe. Uh, can't say. Can't at this uh, moment? I think at, thi <laughs> at this very moment, I think it's it's pretty contested. I thought through, uh, during the regular season, it was uh, pretty pretty open that Trick was the best jungler, but I think right now uh, there's a contest for... Amazing the best jungler. Right. Yes. Andrew, what do you <laughs> think? Yes, there's a contest for the yes. and that's how it is. Okay. Beautiful uh, moment. I think, I think Trick is uh, probably the best right now. I think Jankos is really good as well.
We will see. I do hear that the players are almost ready, and of course we want to see the games. Uh, and there's only one way to find out who will be the best trick or... Uh, oh, damn, I forgot. Spirit, Spirit of course. That so guy. much talking. I love Korean players. There we go. In any case, as we hand things over to our casters, we're going to take a closer look at the rise of the number one seed, G2 Esports. The 2016 European LCS Spring Split started with a few clear favorites heading into the regular season. Absent from everybody's top tier list, however, was the fresh out of challenger G2 Esports. Nine weeks later though, this team cemented their spot as the best in Europe, with a record of 15 wins and three losses. For a team that only qualified for the LCS on their fourth attempt, G2 Esports struggled to find a roster that would bring success until summer 2015. With over 10 roster changes, the team had one constant star player, mid laner Perks. Among the crowded field of top tier talent, the 17 year old carry went on to be one of the most statistically dominant mid laners across the entire region. In his first professional season, he earned a rookie of the split title and Perks asserted his dominance in the mid lane throughout all of G2's games, crushing opponents in favorable matchups and extending his lead into the enemy jungle and side lanes. His impact is always felt and played a crucial role in G2's victories. Perks was able to play forward and aggressive because Trick was often in the shadows, enabling his team with exceptional vision and high pressure play that became synonymous with G2's style. This was especially true on signature champions like Nidalee and Graves, both enabling Trick to invade, contest and kill anyone standing in his way. When it comes to kills and damage per minute, Trick tops the tables, complementing his mid laners play patterns to a T. How can two hyper-aggressive players go unchecked and unpunished? Hybrid is a big part of the answer. G2 as a team rely on their impressive frontline, opting to frequently draft utility-focused tanks into all of their team comps. G2 can often find both peel and engage in their support, and Hybrid commands the role so well, he has the highest KDA of all players in Europe. It's no surprise that this oppressive, highly coordinated lineup earned G2 Esports a first place regular season finish in their inaugural splits in the LCS. A first for any squad out of the European Challenger Series. With the table topping record, the league's fastest average win time, the highest number of kills, the largest early game gold leads, and a bye to the semi finals as the playoffs' first seed, the 2016 Spring Split Championship may be G2 Esports to lose.